Hi, and welcome to the 10th video of our PowerShell 7.2 for Beginners tutorial series. So this is closing in on the end of the beginner series, and we're going to be starting on the intermediate series after this video. Uh, but today we're going to be going over error handling. And more specifically, we're going to be going over the try catch finally statement. Um, so you can just use try catch. And there's also another version of that called try catch finally. We're going to be seeing the two and where you would want to use that finally statement. Um, we've already kind of seen a way to handle errors in the past with the conditional statements, uh, but this is the actual way to really handle errors. And we're going to see what we can do with the try catch statement. And one thing to definitely keep in mind with PowerShell is a lot of the commands actually have non-terminating errors. Now, what that actually means is once you hit an error, the script actually will not stop. It will keep going down and it will keep executing the other commands um, until it finishes, unless it does hit a terminating error. And we're going to see how we can actually tell PowerShell to terminate on an error uh, by default, or we can actually specify it on the commandlets that we're running. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with just a simple script here with no error handling, just so we can see what happens. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to add some try catch statements in here to handle those errors. So what we're first going to want to do is create a variable called file path. And we're going to go ahead and we are just going to put a path here. And I'm actually going to make it a wrong path. So error handling one. Um, the actual folder name is this. So let's go ahead and let's put one here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create another a variable here called files and we're going to make this equal to get child item path and then we're going to get the file path so what we're doing here with the get child item in case you guys haven't used this commandlet yet uh, we really haven't seen it so far um, but get child item will get all the items inside of a folder so if we actually just go ahead and let's not make an error out here um, just so you guys can actually see what happens, but we're going to do a files dot for each open and close parentheses, open and close curly brackets. And we're just going to do a write output here. And we're going to do a write output of a dollar sign underscore because it, we're doing the dot notation. So we're passing in um, by reference, similar to how we would pipe something. Uh, so we're going to do a dollar sign underscore dot name. And let's see what this gives us. So this should give us our data folder and our error handling ps one. This is this folder right here. Now, if we give it the wrong folder name here and we run this, we are going to see that we get this ugly, really red text. Um, but in here, we might not necessarily see that it actually, um, we're not going to actually see it if it actually continues on. So let's go ahead. Let's do a write output here. And we are going to do this is after the error. And let's go ahead and let's run this here. So as you can see, we get our error message and we also get the write output. So it keeps going. And maybe there's a lot of things down here that kind of really rely on this section. And actually the for each really relies on this on this one part that is giving us that error message. So let's go ahead and let's implement some error handling. So what we would want to first do is we're going to add in our try here. And then we are going to go ahead and put our catch. And we have a try and our catch here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and we are going to paste all of this into the try block. In the catch block, what we're going to do here is we're just going to do a right output for now. And we're just going to put in caught error. Now we're going to run this to see what happens. Now we still get this really ugly red text and we still get this is after the error. We didn't actually get this output. And this is actually regarding the earlier comment of the non terminating errors. So get child item by default is not a terminating error. It will keep the script going. 
and try catch statements can only catch terminating errors. So we can actually change this uh, behavior by passing a parameter here called error action. And here we are going to see a bunch of different options here. So we're gonna go over the ones that are probably more commonly used, I would say. Um, so the continue, uh, that is the default. Um, so that will actually show the error message to the user and it'll keep going. Ignore will actually completely ignore the message. It will not store it. It won't show it to the user. It'll pretend like it never even happened. Inquire will actually, it'll show the error message to the user and actually prompt the user if they want to stop or continue the script. Silently continue, I've seen used in a lot of scripts. Um, that will basically store the error um, in, the ver in a error variable, which we will see a little bit later, um, and still continue the script. So it won't actually show the ugly red text to the user. It'll keep it in memory, uh, but it'll just continue and not show anything. Uh, stop will actually cause the script to terminate. Um, it'll just stop the execution. And suspend will actually just kind of pause the script. That one I don't really use um, a whole lot. And break will just break out of the current action that it's in. Uh, it could be very useful. Um, I usually tend to use stop the most and silently continue could also be used if it's something that not necessarily can really affect your script, but you still wanna capture uh, the errors in an error variable and maybe send that by email or go ahead and post that to a log file. So let's go ahead and let's put the error action to stop here. And let's go ahead and let's run this. So as we can see, we don't get this is after the error. All we get is caught error. Now, another cool thing that you could do with the try catch actually is you can actually write output a dollar sign underscore dot exception dot message. And this will actually give you the PowerShell error message, just not in a red text. So this could be extremely useful for error logging or actually displaying something to the user. It's just a little bit friendlier. It's not as as intense as this and it doesn't show you like get child item shows you the line where it happened and then the error message it's just very nice it just tells you tells you cannot find path um, c scripts error handling because it does not exist maybe you're going to want to store that um, in elastic maybe you're going to want to store that in a log file maybe you're going to want to display it to the user um, it's really kind of up to you uh, to decide what you really how you want to handle these errors um, and you could do tons of different things in this try catch. Um, you could do a custom error message if you wanted as well. Now, there is a way to actually set the default error action to always be stop for that current session. So what we can actually do here, we can just remove this error action stop. And at the beginning of our script here, we could do a dollar sign error action preference. Now, if we actually just go ahead and highlight that and see what this is equal to, right now this is equal to continue. But if we go ahead and make this equal to stop, and as you can see, we don't have our error action here anymore. If we do this, we actually get our handled error message and we can actually confirm this just by doing a caught um, and then if we go ahead and there it is. So we caught the error just by changing our default um, error action. Uh, so this is very, very handy. Um, I would actually recommend probably using this on a lot of scripts. This way, all your try catch statements, you know, will actually capture the error messages. Um, what I like to do um, when I'm writing modules and writing methods, uh, you'll see in a lot of my videos when I'm creating a method, the whole method is wrapped around a try catch. Um, this way, if it succeeds all correctly, it'll return the object or return whatever value to the user that it should. And in the catch, it actually returns an error message to the user. So it knows that the commandlet that they used failed for X reason. Um, sometimes you could put the reason. Um, oftentimes, I'll just actually return 
the exception message because um, oftentimes that's probably good enough to, for the user that's using your script to know what's going on. Um, and it's a little bit just friendlier than just kind of exploding in their faces basically. Now, the other option that we also have to see the errors here is actually an array list called error. So if we actually go ahead and we look at this array, we can see that there's tons of stuff in here. And these are actually all the errors that happened in this current session. Now, the one thing to note about this array, typically when you're dealing with an array, when you're adding something, it always adds to the end. But if you want to get the most recent error message, it is actually in the index zero. So here we can see our error message. The most recent error message, now we might say, well, you've been executing the same error, so they would all be the same. If we actually go ahead and do error handling one, two, three, four, and we actually run this, we will actually get error handling one, two, three, four here is the most recent error. And if we do error one, which is the second error in the list, we can actually see that this was the old most recent error. So the error array could be very, very useful. Maybe at the end of your script, you want to output the error array into a log file. This way you have all the errors that occurred in your script in one log file. You don't have to actually write all the errors out to an array. You can just actually output the array that PowerShell has for you and just pump that out to a log file or pump that out to your logging system. Now there is one last part of the try catch statements here and also error handling in general, like I mentioned is a try catch finally. So the finally block is actually just gonna be at the end here with a, also a uh, curly brackets. And here we're gonna do a write output. And this always runs no matter what. Um, so this is where you would actually close your database connections. So if your try has like some opening database connections or connecting to remote computers, it does everything. It does whatever actions it needs to do. And then um, you can close the database right there, or you could actually put it in the finally, because let's say you're in your try statement you're opening up a database or you're opening up a remote connection, it fails halfway through, it's gonna to go to the catch block. Now the catch block, you would also have to then close the database connection. Or what you could do is you could just write that closing the database connection one time in the finally block, because you know that that will always execute no matter what. So let's actually go ahead and let's see this in action. So here we know that we caught the error, this runs no matter what. And actually now if we, remove the error. So here we actually get um, our files, we get the message of this is after the error. And we get this runs this always runs no, uh, not matter what, uh, no matter what, um, that's a little typo there. Um, but the try catch finally is very, very useful. Again, for database connections, API connections, remote computer connections, the finally block is to really clean up, clean that up, close any open connections that you have, clean up any variables that you may not need anymore. It's really the cleanup part of the try catch. The catch is really to display that error message to the user. And then the try is really what you're trying to do. Uh, maybe get something from a database, write something to a database, um, connect to a remote computer and execute some code on that remote computer. So they really all have a part to play. Um, and hopefully this will actually help you guys write um, just stronger scripts. And this way you can actually, at the end, um, write out that error log, uh, send it to yourselves and see what parts are failing in the script. And maybe if there's no errors, then it's awesome. And you actually have uh, a very strong script, especially if you're taking in user input user inputs might not always be accurate and might not always be good. So it's always good to have a try catch statement to maybe just tell the user, Hey, you, you did something wrong. This path doesn't exist. Did you want to try another path or something? Uh, all of these things are possible with the try catch statements. And this is how you would handle errors in PowerShell and especially PowerShell 7.2.
And that is pretty much it for our beginner series. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the PowerShell 7.2 beginner series. We're going to be doing some more intermediate stuff now. Uh, so we're going to be seeing how to create functions and methods and commandlets, uh, how to create modules, uh, how to do some testing with Pester. Um, I know that I already have some of these videos, um, but they're using the PowerShell ISC and I want really to cover this in PowerShell 7.2. Uh, just because I know that without the ISC, things could look a little different. Maybe it's a little bit confusing for some people. Uh, so I just want to go over all that. And then we're going to be taking a look at some APIs uh, with PowerShell, some more REST PS. I know a few of you guys have asked for more Active Directory videos. So we're going to be doing some more Active Directory PowerShell uh, management. Um, and uh, we're going to be building some more GUIs, of course. Uh, maybe some GUIs to interact with some APIs, GUIs to interact with Active Directory. Uh, please let me know in the comment session what you guys would like to see as well. Um, and I can definitely try to get those in those videos. Also, if you guys have any comments or questions for me, please let me know down in the section below. If it's something specific, I'll just try to answer you directly. If it's something a little bit more generic in general that a lot of people can benefit from, I will definitely be creating a video for it. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.